and gentlemen, we got a special, special guest. We are honored here at Just Acting Up Show. We got to clap it in for this young lady. Chanel <laughs> Bell, what's up? What's up? Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, good morning again. I know you're bright and early like the orange juice. So, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, are we on the same time zone? I believe so. Central? Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are on the same time zone. Yeah, so, I, usually, I usually wake up like at 6 a.m. So, this is kind of like a little bit later for me. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm an I'm a early bird. You the early, early bird. Everybody's still knocked out of sleep. And you yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, man. That, that's good because because that's how i am too that's how i am too so um let's let's go ahead and get in get into it uh so we already know about the show that you're on power but let's take it back and oh, tell of course. Us, uh, you gotta uh, well, put power. the force behind it i gotta put the force behind it put the force. <laughs> appreciate it for correcting me so tell us before what how was your life before you got casted into Power Force? What what was going on in Chanel Bell's life? Yeah, um, yeah, I um, I'm a so I'm a professional like working actor, and I've been that for some years now. But um, as y'all know, I'm based in Chicago, um, and so actually, I actually took a break from acting. So I don't know how far back you want me to go, but. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, I went to Howard University to get my BFA. <laughs> HU. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I uh, went to Howard, got my BFA in acting, and then I like acted some, but I just was kind of like, I was very young when I went to school, like younger than everybody else. So I was very much still developing as a person, like what, what did I want, like kind of how I saw the world and I just felt like I needed to like live because I, I for whatever reason I felt like I didn't have that much to give to like the craft of storytelling so I just wanted to like live a little bit um so like I traveled and I live in different cities and stuff and just kind of got a feel for things and then I met up with this um I got connected to this actress, um, Angela Robinson. She's on the Have and Have Nots and like a whole bunch of stuff. I got connected to her um, and she kind of became my mentor, her and her husband. And they were like, you should probably go to grad school. And I was like, oh, I just spent a whole lot of money, you know, four years of education. Like, I don't see why I would go to grad school for acting again. Like you either have it or you don't, you know, at this point. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, grad school, like if you wanna like, you know, have like longevity, like a career that you can be acting like a Meryl Streep or like a Cicely Tyson, like in your nineties, a lot of that is not just, you know, a lot of what we do is not just emotion and heart. A lot of it is technique, you know, um, so that you can actually sustain your physical self, your voice, your body, all of it, your health. Um, and so they was like, you, you can develop that kind of stamina going to grad school. So I applied to a couple of schools and they told me to go to DePaul. They was like, put DePaul on your list. So I did. And, you know, DePaul is in, in Chicago and I got accepted and I went. So I basically took like a big break from the, from the business, went back to school for three years. Then I graduated. And when I graduated, I just basically hit the ground running out here, um, like Chicago has been so good to me. Like I've just stayed employed as an artist, which is only a blessing to say, cause you know, so many artists, we have survival jobs. We do, you know, 10 different things to stay afloat. But, you know, once I graduated, I was able to um, really just work on my craft. And mostly what I was doing was stage. I'm a, basically I'm a stage actress is what I call myself. So I'm always doing a show. Um, so booking, and I did some TV and film, but booking power and having such a bigger, like a bigger role than I'd ever had, um, it just kind of gave me like a, like a blood taste for more TV and film. Cause mm -hmm. it's just like a, I don't know if y'all act, I'm, I'm, y'all act, right? Do y'all act? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. you know, you, you know that TV and film, it's just a totally different beast and stage, like what you can do and the type, kind of stories that you can tell. Um, and, you know, it's just, and it, and it pays better. So, um, <laughs> so just, it just, it kind of gave me like a sense of like, oh, I do want to do TV and film. So that's kind of how it, um, 
kind of has changed my career and I'm transitioning out of doing so much stage because when you do stage, you kind of lock your schedule in for months mm -hmm. um, and you really can't do a lot of TV and film. So um, yeah, so I'm kind of turning the corner while I'm doing more TV and film and it's exciting and you know, we'll see how far I go. Oh, oh. Um, let's go back a little bit further. Okay. <laughs> what or who got you into acting when you were nine, nine years old? Yeah, I um I did my first play, stage play when I was nine. Um, but before that, I was in a second grade and uh there was this play that came to my elementary school and it was done by all kids. And it was the first play that I had ever seen. I had never seen nothing like it. I had never even heard anybody tell me that there was a thing called plays, a play. You know, I, you know, I'm from Virginia, so we didn't have a lot of arts in that area. Um, so I saw this play at my school, and I was shook. I was like, "What the hell is this? Like, I want to do that." <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm like a really big introvert, um, so I really don't like if I'm in a crowded room. I'm not like taking up space. I'm not really like speaking all, you know, trying to be the center of it. Um, so seeing those kids take up so much space and be so loud with their voices and be like the spotlight, I was like, I could, I could mess with that. Like I could get down with that. So I went home and told my mom, like, I want to be an actor, I think. And she just kind of got me into it. Um, I, I auditioned to be in a play when I was nine. So like two years after that. And, uh, and I booked it and I acted in it and then I didn't act again until I went to Howard. So it's kind of like a long, like a, like a big gap. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. And so now with um, everything that's happened, you, the force, which was a great season, by the way. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, how has life changed now since, since the show's aired? I think that the biggest change, which I'm like really trying to get adjusted to is the visibility that I have now. Like, mm -hmm. You know, no, you know, nobody, you know, people that know me know me, but for people to know me, like, you know, walking down the street now and somebody being like, oh my God, but like kind of freaking out too, not just being like, oh, hey, you're in power, but like kind of freaking out. And I'm like, like I was walking to the, <laughs> I was walking <laughs> to the train, <laughs> I was walking to the train the other day and it's this uh, a young black woman, she kind of did a double take at me. And I, you know, I'm just thinking that, you know, sister to sister, like, hey, sis, what up? And I keep, you know, walking. But when I walk past her, she's like, oh, my God. And I turn around and she's like, ah, like she starts freaking out. And I was like, what? Like, what, what, what? And she's like, power. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm not used to that at all. I'm not used to that at all. And so uh, now, like, I, when I, even when I travel out of state now, like going to some states and being in a restaurant or being at a, you know, wherever, and people coming up to me and approaching me and telling me that they like my work, it's all like over, overwhelming. So I think, I think the visibility is the biggest, is the biggest change right now. And, um, and then like, you know, on that inside level, like also having visibility amongst people in the industry too, mm -hmm. right? So like directors, producers, so like that feels good. And that's exciting because that's just going to be more doors to, you know, open. So yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Love it. Love it. So let's switch gears for a little bit. Now, I took a notice that you have your own own cosmetics, right? Is, is that right? Your own cosmetics. And I was looking, yeah. Yeah. So tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Because I was looking at it. I'm like, you know, hey, sis, you. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, so basically what I have is basically I retail uh, beauty uh products from black artisans um so i kind of started with like a subscription box service where if you subscribe every other month you get a box full of like beauty products self-care products and it's all coming it's all black owned it's all black made yeah um i launched it in 2020 right after george floyd was murdered uh, oh, wow. yeah because well, first of all, when it, when COVID hit and then Black Lives Matter Part Two happened, mm -hmm. uh, we as artists and you know, and you know James, like our industry completely stopped. Yeah. <laughs> like there was no there was no plays, there was no sets, you know, there, nobody was filming. So it kind of a lot of artists went for a while without working, yeah. and um, 
and so I, it gave me the, like time off to recalibrate my mind and decide like, how did I want to respond to this moment as an artist, as a black woman, you know, as an American, all those things. And I decided that I wanted to try to create more equity as far as like money goes, um, you know, for young entrepreneurs and also for young black artisans. Um, and so having COVID and George Floyd, that gave me the opportunity to um, do something else outside of acting. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of like a, um, it's a business, but it's more like, it's, it's something a little bit more personal to me. So right. it's not anything that I'm like, buy my, you know, buy products, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like, it, it's just, it means a little bit more. So the people that subscribe to my boxes, we have relationships. Like I talk to my customers and, you know, it's, it's a real intimate type of thing. And that's what I wanted to continue to be until it expands. But yeah. Beautiful. I love that. I love that. And um, I think that was such a, well, it still is a, a crazy times we're living in with um, not trying to get too political and everything with, you know, the police shootings and all that and everything. But I think during this pandemic era that we're living in, us as artists, all four of us, we were trying to find something to channel that energy and that um, just channel all that and express ourselves and be that light uh, during the times that it was just dark. And I think what you doing that was beautiful. So, Thank you. Yeah, so that's that's beautiful. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. So um, as you, you know, further your career, what are your, do you have any aspirations to do um, any work behind the camera as well? Yeah, I actually write. I'm a writer. So like uh, I've been writing, working on a couple pilots. Well, um, <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry. Man, I didn't, I didn't hey, you know, we, we do a little bit of writing, writing and we do a little bit of something, something too. What y'all be doing? Y'all be writing too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you doing, Mike? <laughs> Come on, Chanel. Come on now. I want to know. Go, go ahead. Mike, go. Mike, what you be writing? Uh, my life story now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we definitely, we definitely uh, work on comedy. Um, oh. We all have our own thing as well, as far as like even in the action superhero space and drama, even in the zombie world, we have our own. Oh, yes. We work on. So we all bring a different um, writing skill to the talent. So we love to hear when other writers uh, come on and actors that's doing some of the same things and working on their own thing, because we like to see see that to see that you know you're multifaceted you know you have your, yes. your business you, you know your writing your acting like that's awesome thank you yeah I actually started writing right now I'm writing I used to write fantasy um but now it's kind of more like fantasy sci-fi um and it centers around like us in sci-fi I, I don't know how y'all feel about sci-fi American sci-fi but it usually don't include us in the narrative <laughs> or if we are in a narrative, we either the scientist that's dead first or, you know what I'm saying? Like we are the one black person on the spaceship that makes it to, the, to Mars or the next planet. So that means that if procreation happens, it ain't going to be no more black folks. So it kind of <laughs> kind of bothers me that they'll just throw one of us in there as if that is enough to like to create a whole new world, you know? So sci-fi used to feel very, um, uh, what's the word? Like exclude excluding like it felt like it excluded us yeah um mm -hmm. and so I just I don't know I started writing sci-fi and I, I like really quit it real hard and yeah. I think I think black folks I think black folks in sci-fi and horror is like Ooh. really interesting oh that <laughs> black horror hit different we talk about that on the show every now and then like Jordan mm -hmm. Peele and and that show them on on the uh, mm -hmm. Amazon is That's Amazon yeah, it is yeah. tough. So we we found a good lane with black horror. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm excited to see more come out too, because I think that like Jordan Peele is kind of opening that door for people who already like like us that already want to do horror and for whatever I don't know, I don't know for whatever reason, white folks, I don't know why they don't see a, us in it, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a flip because they kill us off so easily. <laughs> 
<laughs> so now <laughs> we survive. <laughs> right. You're telling it from their perspective. That's why we need us back there writing the story so we can tell it from yeah. our perspective. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Yeah, Chanel, we needed you in uh Lovecraft Country. We needed you in these Listen. other we, 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 Yeah, we, we need you. I was so disappointed in canceling that show. I know, yeah. I know, I know. But you know, um, Misha Green got that deal with I think it's with Apple TV, like a multi-million dollar deal. Mm-hmm. So I know she's over there. I know she's gonna cook up some really dope stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, um, so let let's go ahead and start. I know people always, whenever they watch our show, they're like, "When y'all gonna talk about the like? Look, let us. We like to talk to people, man. We like to like the conversation. It's healthy conversation rules the nation, and we like to get to know people when they come on. Um, so we we can go ahead and let's let's get into power real quick and um, force power book force. Um, let's talk about your character real quick. Let's yeah. talk about it. so. When um when you was approached with this character, of course we tell us about your experience when you found out about the character that you was gonna be playing. Well, it's so funny because power they do a really good job with like protecting like the their story because they don't you know they don't want it to leak, um you know yada yada yada. So what they do is mm-hmm. kind of when they're looking for when they're adding new characters to the universe and then they're reaching out to different actors for auditions everything is very discreet. Everything is very protected and private. So, you know, you don't really get a lot of information. You get just enough information about the character so that you can like create an audition around it and then they'll see if if they're vibing with what you bring to the table. So for my character, like the, the, the little bit of information that I got, I was like, is is she Walter White? You know, like <laughs> right? Like I forgot I'm, about like, she, White. <laughs> right? I'm, yeah. I'm like, she's a black Walter White. Like right. she, she, she's Heisen, Heisenberg, right? She's Heisenberg, she's, yeah. She's Heisenberg. And so that's kind of how I approached it. I was like, okay, she's brilliant. She's mm. brilliant. She's at the top of her field, but there's something in her that's a little dark that wants to kind of get a little dirty in that in that world um and so I don't know I just kind of tried to (laughs) see what it would be like to be a black woman with that much power right you know that much power um and and yeah and the producers liked what I brought to the table and and ended up offering me the role and once I actually got cast in it and was able to read the scripts and like understand what the actual role was. I was like, oh, so she, she kind of like, she's curious about this world, but then the world, like as soon as she touches it, it just like, like, you know, just completely traps her. And now she's, and now it's like, she's a little bit in under her head. Mm. She's a lot of it in under her head. Um, and having these like there's a there was a there was a couple scenes that was like not included in this season where my right. character was able to talk a little bit more about how I felt in the mix of all of this. And I had this one monologue where I talked about like, you know, I, I really started off wanting to help people, like as a chemist, like I thought that I was gonna create the cure to cancer or some shit. And now I'm here cooking drugs and it kind of feels good, but you know, I'm torn morally. And so I had this like whole dilemma and I'm, I'm, um, me and Tommy, we had the scene in the lab where we're talking and he's just like, you either in or you out doc. And I'm like, I'm in, I'm in. So they, they, they cut that scene. And I understand why, because I mean, they cut a lot of y'all know they cut a lot of stuff on um, TV shows or whatever, but, um, it was something that I kind of held on to as I continued to craft a character, like her being kind of like just torn all the time and scared and, but it feels good and you know all of those things so it, it was interesting to to play dr lauren I, i'm not gonna lie i thought you was a goner for a second <laughs> what were you what you mean um you know every time they like i'm trying to get out let me let me get away out of time you try to make a run for it but then you know she rolled up on you and, uh, I, know. I was like oh, they gonna, but it looks like you made it out the season alive so it's it's crazy because every episode, every episode, the fans is like, she did, she did, she did, and I'm like, dang. <laughs> it's like you was working with some some people, and oh man, they gonna kill her. 
And yeah. uh, quick. <laughs> on set with uh, Joseph Sakura. What was that experience like? Man, Joseph is so, and Joseph knows knows this because I told him privately. But like, I Joseph has been one of my favorite actors for like the last like seven years, almost a decade. Mm. And I've watched everything he's done, and I remember watching. Um, I re- it was like season five of Power, mm. and I was in grad school at the time. So all I'm doing is like consuming, consuming uh, people's work and kind of looking at it from like a student standpoint. So I'm watching season five of Power and he does his one scene and I'm like, this man is so brilliant. Like he is such a good actor and I would really be honored to act opposite him. Like I really feel like if I ever acted opposite him, he would bring something out of me that you know that would just be cool, and um, and then I ca- and then I got cast in Power, and mm-hmm. and it was crazy. It was really surreal approaching it because at the end of the day, y'all, like a lot of these celebrities that we I ain't gonna say a lot, but some mm-hmm. of these celebrities that we know and love are not the nicest people on set, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. And it can be very <laughs> disappointing when you meet the person that you look up to, and then they're like a dick. Mm. But he was the person that I hoped he would be. He was so freaking kind and humble. Like, humble to the point where I'm like, dang, like, you're not smelling, you're not, like, he's just so, like, he's not, he's not walking around big headed at all. You know, he'll sit beside you in between takes, talk about the character, run lines, talk about life, like, be like, I wonder what they're going to do next. Like, he's so in it and so humble and curious just like I was and you know eventually one day on set I was like I gotta tell you and I don't I hope it's not weird but I gotta tell you that I've admired you for a while as an actor and um it's an honor to act opposite you he was like I think you're amazing Chanel and I was like what me (laughs) he's like you're you're an amazing actress and I'm like so to hear that from somebody who I looked up to it was like damn kind of you know kind of shook me um he's amazing He's generous, scene partner, all that, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 All, all y'all seem like it. And y'all, all of you, the characters in this, um, the chemistry is just on point. And, sure. and I'm glad that you said that you, you know, your character, you feel as if like she's, of course, hi, well, first of all, I'm glad that you're highly educated, your character. Same. Um, on and off screen, I'm pretty sure like you you from grad school and everything. Um, so um, and I love seeing that. And I, with you just telling us that your character is like, I, I'm all about my business. I'm trying to you know make a cure for cancer or whatever. But you also like a tidbit of danger. And I see that when you I see that now right when you said that line when he was like, you want to try some of this real quick, doc? And I saw how you was like. Yeah, yeah right. Me <laughs> yeah, you like slow. Yeah, let me go. I mean, I've been you've been around it all day in the lab cooking. Like yeah. me, mm-hmm. when you cooking food, when you cooking, you know, you I don't know if you you know vegan or whatever. But when you cooking up some food in the kitchen, you you know you want to sample a little bit. So you know, yeah, she the doc was in on that. So yeah, that was good, beautiful. Yeah, and it, it's it's also crazy because that that particular day when we were filming. um we kind of, and that's what, that's one thing I love about the producers and the creators of Power. When we get on set, if we do the scene and something's not working, they let us be like, can we explore some stuff? And they let us kind of massage it. And I love that. And that particular scene, I act, it was actually originally written that I was supposed to le- like, oh, I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow and leave. And then they were going to do the dolly about themselves and turn up. Mm. And, uh, and our showrunner was like, what if she stays? Like, what if she tastes mm. her own product? And I was like, Y'all think Dr. Lauren would do that? So we had this whole conversation and I'm like, let's just try it. And we tried it and it felt right. It felt right because it kind of, like you said, it added it to that storyline where she's like, I do want to do this, I don't. And then when we see her actually do the Dahlia, it's like, she, it's a different type of implication. Like she is cooking, but now she's using. So like, what does that mean for her? Um, can she ever go back to... Dr. Lauren, the scientist, you know, whatever, whatever. Mm. So I really, I really like that they let us add that in. Yeah. Okay. It, it worked. It as, worked. As much as you can tell us, um, 
I, I know you, you limited on what you can say, but what do you see what's next for Dr. Lauren? This is what I will say. First of all, I have no idea. They mm. like, I have no idea. Like that they really do a good job at like separating the actors from the writing room. And I and I appreciate that, right? Because it can get, get kind of muddy. But nobody is safe in power. <laughs> mm. And that's something that every every episode uh, last season, you know, I'm like, okay, I am in this episode. Cool. Like nobody is safe. And you know, best case scenario, I'm in I'm throughout the whole season and they do they, they develop, you know, my character and Right now, it kind of ended where Claudia kidnaps me again <laughs> as I try mm. to escape and gets this information out of me about JP. And, you know, they don't really show how she gets this information out of me. So for all I know, season two could open and I could be tied to a chair, beat the fuck up, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. or I could be totally cooking for this new family or I could be on a jet you know I I don't know um I don't know and I'm very excited to see we start filming in, uh next week so I'm very excited to see um Ooh. what it's gonna be I literally have no idea Chris okay. yeah okay. Let's see. what do y'all think like what do y'all think is gonna happen man <laughs> uh now you're getting the writer and me involved well all of us now let me see um I think Claude is going to keep you all to herself <laughs> yep. and she's going to keep that, keep that, that you, you like that cash cow right now. Long, yeah. Little, yeah. yeah. Cause they, they not going to kill you. They're going to, they're going to treat you like Jesse. Like Jesse. <laughs> You're not a foreigner. <laughs> yeah, man, we, we, nah, we we need you. We need you. <laughs> you, need, you need to ask ask the people that uh behind the scenes like hey, so y'all gonna take care of me, right? Y'all gonna give me like put me up with the lavish meals, y'all gonna put me up with, <laughs> with the nice gifts, like yeah, I, I, yeah, ask ask them for that. Oh, I mean I would I, I do I will say that I would like to see uh Lauren have a little bit more agency because it does seem mm. like She's just being like you, like the cash cow was being kind of cashed out. Like everybody's just kind of passing the cash cow around. And I'm yeah. like, it would be nice to see her kind of be more like, okay, we we eat we equal now. We all equal partners. If I'm gonna yeah. be in that, so. But you know, we'll see. Yeah, we will see. Hopefully, so. they'll let you uh, go on your next date on the show without a third party. A chaperone. Chaperone. Yeah, <laughs> was just about to ask you about that. That was the, the I know that had been awkward. <laughs> well, I'm trying to go. <laughs> yeah, okay. that was that was that was pretty dope. That was definitely them trying to massage the relationship between Lauren and Liliana. Yeah. Um, and honestly, Audrey, Audrey, who plays Liliana, like um being able to spend that time with her, like when we were filming that scene, like we actually have like a real friendship outside of the out of the work and so yeah. it's really cool so it was really cool because I feel like if that scene was not in there I don't know if I would have been able to connect to that actress in that way mm -hmm. because we all the other scenes we have like really short scenes or we're like we have like group scenes with like Claude and Tommy mm -hmm. so um I appreciated the date scene just because of that but um yeah it was weird as hell that was <laughs> I'm like, why do I, why do I gotta go on a date with this? Like, can you stay in the car or something? Like, hey, right. you at the oh, table? <laughs> what? <laughs> man, messing up her game, man. She trying to enjoy herself and, and love her life and enjoy her life, man. Right. So, my goodness. <laughs> so, um, a few more things, and we'll we'll uh, get you out of there because we know that you you know get get going. Um, so. Power Book Force. Now you was on. Oh well, that's why I want to ask you first before I get in that. So tell us a little. I can't help but notice the artwork you got set up behind you. Now yeah. I know you're a poet as well. Yes. And I kind of do see a little bit of that in your acting as well too, because I use that as a weapon when I'm acting. But tell tell me a little bit about the, the artwork you got back there. So this is um this is actually from Bisa Butler. I don't know. Do y'all know Bisa Butler? She's a young black woman that. She basically uh, quilts these like, I'm gonna take this down. So this is like, 
this is just like a print of it but in real life this is like a quilt Oh, okay. nice. and it's huge it like hangs on the wall and so she basically takes like different pieces of fabric and she like paints with it like creates wow. different she's freaking amazing if you go on instagram and type in bisa butler she she recently did one of chadwick boseman as a tribute and she mm -hmm. i think she also just did one of quest love um i think right before right after he won that oscar for uh summer of soul which i hope y'all have seen because it's Yes. phenomenal mm -hmm. um but um yeah and then this one actually this one is done by my little cousin she's a painter oh. and she's yeah she's trying to like get her stuff you know going but um her name is Lavelle and she mm -hmm. painted this orange <laughs> it is it is an orange all right, if she said it was the orange, it's an orange. Because I got ADHD. I, I was paying attention to that the whole interview. But, you um, know, we, it's uh, an orange. It's a nice orange. It's an orange. Yeah, it's an orange. orange. <laughs> this and, then, yeah. and then this painting, um, I got this at this little uh, festival out here in Chicago. Another Black artist, mm -hmm. her name is Dana Todd Pope. Mm -hmm. And this is called uh, Surrounded by White Space or something like that. Surrounded by White mm -hmm. or something like that. And um, I just really loved it. I really loved it. I thought that it was, it just kind of spoke to me and reminded me of how I felt as a little girl, just feeling, I don't know, constantly unsure of self. No. So, but all around my apartment, I have Black art everywhere and also art that I've painted and all that. Nice, beautiful, love it. Thank you for sharing that. I was looking because, like, I just like if I see some art, like if I'm walking downtown or whatever, I'm like, something about that art looks something and just draws you into it. Yeah. So that's all I had to ask about that. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Let, one last thing, and we'll get you out of here. Um, who does Chanel see her? Who do you see yourself working with soon? Who would you love to work with? Hmm. Take your time. As she ponders, 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 ponders. I have a list of people that I pray to God I can work with. Uh, William Jackson Harper is one person. Mm. Um, do y'all know him? Yeah. His name sounds very familiar. He He's the good place. He did. The, he was on the good place. Okay. Uh, gotcha. or, yeah. Love life season two. Mm. He's just, I love, I love that he's, He's a leading man, but he's like a different kind of leading man. It's kind of quirky. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself that way. Like, I'm a leading woman, but I'm kind of quirky. I'm kind of different, like, and um, than your average ingenue. And I'm really drawn to his work. I also really love um, Domingo Coleman. Okay. Yes, he's a very good actor. I always switch his name. I'd be like, Coleman, Domingo, Domingo. I know what you're talking about. Right. I mean, so the Walking Dead, Candyman. Yeah. He's yeah. He's, he's freaking brilliant. He started off like us, like writing, like he writes plays um, and he acts and he does all these, he's really smart and really brilliant. And um, I don't know if y'all were able to see Ma Rainey's Black Bottom yep. with Viola yep. Davis, but mm -hmm. he, I mean, he killed it. Like he just, mm -hmm. he just has this like finesse in his work that I'm like, did y'all see um, Zola? No, I haven't. I no, I haven't. I haven't seen it. Man, y'all should watch that. It's it's really phenomenal. He's in that as well. And you just, okay. he has a range. He has like a range that I find like um, that I aspire to have. Um, mm. where you can, he could just do any character and it's so believable and real and, and grounded. So um, those two, um, you know, I wouldn't mind working with like Lakeith Stanfield. Mm. Um, you know, he's really interesting to me and dope. Um, that's three black men. I'm trying to think of any women. I, mean, I have a lot of women that I would love to work with. Um, I mean, honestly, I could get down with Tessa Thompson too. Like, you know, some young black yeah. women on screen. Like, yeah. I can see that. Tessa yeah. Thompson. Yeah. I can see a lot. I, I think with uh, you having a theater background, you can you have the range, you can find it and narrow it out. And I and like you being a poet, like when I saw that you were a poet. I'm like, what? You poet too? Like, come on, sis. Like, <laughs> come on, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we're looking forward to seeing you and more, more things. I think the sky is just like, you just about to, yeah, it's coming. Thank you. Coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's one question that has been burning for me to ask you 
What, and Mike? People, and the people must know. <laughs> How come you have a car and Tyreek don't? <laughs> Wait, I have a what? You have a car. Car? A car? A car. Don't you have a car? I do have a car. On the show? On the show. I do, I do. Okay. Because everybody on the Chicago show got either a BMW <laughs> or a Rolls Royce or, or what is it, a Lambo. Tyreek, yeah. all he got a $2 day pass. <laughs> 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 oh, I never noticed that. But, yeah. don't, but don't he have a driver though? Don't, he's like grown up with drivers. No, he no, has, no. He 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 flinched on. He busting it. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to give him like the real city experience or something. <laughs> he said that too. He's like, damn man, nobody want to give me no ride. <laughs> That's hilarious. I never noticed that. <laughs> yeah, like well, you you know, you got so much going on with trying to remember lines there everything. I mean, even Tyreek said it on his. He's like, why are I be doing all this stuff for this family and ain't nobody give me a ride? Damn, so, that's hilarious. Now I gotta watch. Now I gotta pay attention. To Go back and watch it. Like everybody is pulling up. Even Mary J. Blige got a BMW. Everybody got a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Hey. You, you, uh, uh, you we gonna figure it out. We gonna get that together. But um, we gonna let you go. I know you gotta get out of here. You, you, yes. you, you're a busy woman too. So. Yes. Um, <laughs> With that being said, peace and blessings to you. Be safe. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so, thank so much. You. For thank you. Thank yeah, you very thanks, much. y'all. And blessings back to you and to your show. I hope you continue to get some cool artists up here. And it's really cool because I feel like, I almost feel like your show will have, like, artists right before they take off. Not, not like, yeah. saying that about yeah. myself, but, right. like, it's it seems like y'all, like, would be able to, like, reach those people that's, like, right about to, like, blow up. And that's yeah. that's really dope. That's really dope. So, oh, yeah. why can't make me cry today, girl? Man. Oh, <laughs> I'm the poet, the poet <laughs> cries. <laughs> right on. Man, uh, we look forward to working with you one day. I'm already speaking into existence. I'll be on set yes. with you. Or yes, myself, yes, 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 yes. Myself, Chris, and Mike, all three of us be on set with you. Absolutely. And let's get the let's keep writing, y'all, because we really got to create this content. There's a lot yeah. of money out there. There's a lot of people. And right now, I feel like it's our time for young black creatives. Like people mm -hmm. want to see our stories right now. And um, so yeah, just stay stay encouraged, stay motivated, keep keep believing in y'all shit. Yes, ma'am. Will yeah. do. Thank you, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Be safe.